The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you in part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. Good evening and welcome to my state of mind. I am Dan York with an original program here on this Monday evening for you. The business community is starving for aid from government and CARES Act money that has been sitting in the Rhode Island bank for the most part since COVID hit still trickling to them. The governor now has a new program, big on headlines, short on execution again for the pause, the two week pause that we have just entered, $50 million for the small business community. Whether we get access to it or not is another story. Senator Lou De Palma has a concern about that that he will express a little bit later on in the program. And it is that senator who is my guest and focus of the conversation this evening. Let's begin with the press conference that he had prior to the governor's press conference on small business prior to Thanksgiving. Senator Louis De Palma and Representative Carlos Taban hosted a virtual news conference Monday on the need for greater assistance for Rhode Island small businesses. The conference was called to support the immediate allocation of $75 million in CARES Act funds to the Restore RI grant program. Simplify the process to make sure that more Rhode Island businesses have access to these funds because we don't need them today. We needed them weeks ago. Luke Rinchin, a DJ, says he's one of those small business owners. He says since March, he has tried everything to stay afloat, and this pause is not helping. He had 13 employees. Now he is working with three. You know, we did get the PPP, so that helped for only eight weeks uh, back in April. But, you know, here it is, November going on December, and there's no relief. I mean, there's absolutely nothing. And says while he finds support online in a Rhode Island hospitality group, he doesn't know what to do. I mean, I've had couples postponed three times already. I mean, imagine the, just to shut somebody down a week or two before their wedding. Sarah Zarella, owner of a photography business out of Exeter, says... Ocean State small businesses really need the community's help these next few holiday weeks to survive. Since March, I know I can speak for myself. I mean, every single day, I am trying to find a way to survive. Just for a few more. And says there are many ways to spread some holiday cheer this year. And so the gentleman that held that press conference last week is with us. Senator Lou De Palma is, is here, and we wish him a belated happy Thanksgiving. Trust, uh, trust the family as well. You're well, Lou. We are well, all well, and hope everybody else listening and watching has a happy Thanksgiving as well. Yeah, so it's, uh, we're en route to Advent and Christmas and, you know, the promise for vaccines over the next three, four, five months and, and a hope for a return to some level of normalcy. But in the meantime, uh, there is a lot of triage that, that, that's, <laughs> that's got to go on here in a big way. So uh, the governor came out, of course, on Wednesday before Thanksgiving with what I think is a belated response to the needs of small business tailored in her mind for the pause that the uh, that the 50 million dollars that she's going to dedicate to grants for small businesses are there to help businesses through the pause and then of course she supplemented 50 million dollars in unemployment bonus uh payments we'll, we'll, we'll talk about all of that um lou i gotta tell you i i think the 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 50 million dollars for the pause you don't want to look a gift horse in the mouth but it's a lot too late. There are a lot of businesses that didn't make it to the pause. Talk to me about your overall concern for small business right now. I think it's been a, uh, a lack of focus from a small business perspective. I think the phrase, Dan, you're using is a day late, dollar short. Uh, this should have happened months ago. I can understand and appreciate some of the reasons and rationale of why it wasn't done earlier, but we depend on our small businesses. Thousands of people work at small businesses. We have thousands of small businesses in Rhode Island. They're a lifeblood of our economy, and it will impact our budget, not so much this year, but the budget that we'll be putting together that will start July 1st of 2022. It's uh, really a cascading effect. This really should have happened months ago. The role of the legislature has been abdicated during this, during this crisis. Uh, look, I, I get... And, you know, we've talked about this ad nauseum here. I get that in March, April, May, when the virus was coming at us like a freight train, and of course, it's coming at us again like a freight train, but I get when we were first 
unconditioned to what this virus is and what was happening that, you know, putting the emergency authorization to the governor to, to manage through this was an appropriate thing. And, you know, we all credit her for the early talk down to the virus, yada, yada, yada. But feigning, you know, an oversight board that has a questionable constitutional role and then really going away, I'm talking about the legislature, really more or less going away for the spring and summer and, and fall, I think puts us in this position in a lot of ways, don't you? Yeah, I've been talking to constituents throughout this last six, seven months, both within the district and outside the district and various uh, groups that I've been working on over the last 12 years while in the Senate. And myself, not just myself, but I know other senators and representatives have been working uh, collaboratively or independently on issues of which they've worked on in the past or issues that reflect what other people are doing. Some doing it to small business. I know I've done a fair amount with regards to health and human services and the aid they need with PPE, with hazard pay, and all those have come about. And the governor's listened. She's done a great job with managing the, uh, working to manage the spread of the virus. Uh, obviously, it's been an extreme challenge uh, of what we've seen. The dilemma has been bringing legislatures together, how to do that. Uh, I think some of the challenge has been, could we have gotten there sooner? Because something would have been done sooner and it's not that it's gonna go away. Uh, none of us have been through a pandemic before. I'm not giving you excuses, I'm trying to rationalize it to some degree, the thinking that's been going on here. So the with leadership, I'm on constant call with leadership with regards to thoughts, what's needed, what help is needed. I know they're in conversation with the Senate president, the speaker, speaker prior, speaker endorsed, uh, to be speaker, whatever name that name has in this uh, interregnum. I learned that word a few weeks ago, so to speak. And the governor had been meeting pretty regularly to talk about what some of those challenges are and what we do moving forward. Uh, it's, it's a, it is a new world. I think that's changing uh, the caucus we had. We will be meeting, expected to meet at Sappensley Hall I think the Senate President indicated that at Rhode Island College coming up here in a couple of weeks. He said prepare for the week of the 14th to do the budget for the current fiscal year we're in and any other pressing things that may have to happen. Um, but I think moving forward, uh, you're going to see the, uh, as we move into the session with the new legislature being seated and sworn in inauguration on the 5th of January, uh, a ratcheting up uh, of our involvement. Uh, I'm looking forward to chairing the oversight committee, and this will be clearly one of the areas of which oversight will be done. All right. Well, uh, on that on that note, that was a that was a a, a comprehensive diplomatic answer. Uh, I, the senator and I can uh, agree to disagree on on the veracity of this general assembly's response. Uh, I think it has been I think it has been a terrible abdication of the responsibility. Uh, the idea that that the governor has been uh, we would agree, Lou, that it's a, a little bit uh, too little too late when it comes to the small business uh, needs, uh, some oversight during this whole time, and some, some more formality of response, I think, would have, uh, would have helped that. When we come back, though, we'll talk about why it's a little too, little too late, but, you know, let's talk about what the needs are going to be for, for, for what is uh, available to the small business community. With Senator Lou De Palma, we'll be right back on My State of Mind. Stay with us. Welcome back with Senator Lou De Palma as my guest. The, uh, the question for small businesses now, uh, what to do in, in, this, in this, not only this pause period, but it's going to be a long, cold winter. Uh, to the Senator's credit, he, he put a press conference together last week suggesting, you know, the need was there. Let's go before the governor came out with $50 million of grant for the pause time and, and talk about what the Small Business Coalition requests than demands were. You know, the Small Business Coalition, Lou, is, a, is an interesting crowd. You know, they, they, they've done a pretty good job, I think, of, 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 of becoming an organic organization right. in concert with the Lieutenant Governor, Dan McKee, who, who, who put them together on, on his website. They originally asked for 50,000, they originally asked for 10% of the $1.25 billion that was available in the CARES Act money. And 
uh, some 4,000 businesses signed a petition asking the governor to react to that. She ignored the petition, but a week later came up with her own restore or rebuild Rhode Island uh, grant program for $50 million. Only $30 million, which she could actually get out the door. Are you as concerned as I have been about that setup? Commerce's ineffectiveness there and really just a, I think, a complete foul ball, if not a swing and a miss. So, Dan, I concur. In fact, I should have mentioned earlier the, uh, the lieutenant governor, to say it in plain words, has been the champion of small business for many years and clearly during the pandemics for the last what is it, eight months now, seven months, or eight months, I guess, almost finishing now. I'm typically on his Monday calls that he has with the Small Business Coalition with Chris Parisi and company. We have one again this morning. Um, he has been that champion. The, uh, it has gone on, I say from an elected official perspective, no matter what level you're at, you need to do three things. Hear, listen, and act. The governor has done that. It's been late in doing that. Uh, the concern is, with regards to the 30, as you indicate, approximately $30 million going out of the 50. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk about that from a visit to businesses that I went to with the Lieutenant Governor when he's been visiting on his 39 cities and towns tour. Uh, some found it extremely difficult to do. So Commerce then went back and modified it to make it easier. I think part of the challenge is there's not enough. It's a, I don't want to say it's a race to the finish to get something out there. Uh, some of it needed to be tested and have some small businesses Tell me how this is going to be. I don't think that was done. If it was done, then the businesses they had going to put the application to restore RI must have been phenomenal at it. No one from talking to some of the small businesses I've talked to, it took them hours the first time. The visit a week ago, about 10 days or so ago with the Lieutenant Governor here in Middletown, 75% of the businesses, 75% of the businesses knew nothing about the program. Nothing about it. It needs to be simpler. It needed to be the case, I said, and the, go the lieutenant governor has an approach. If you think about how the federal stimulus program applied to individuals, right, and families, they looked at your tax return from last year, based on your taxable income or gross, AGI, gross, adjusted gross income, here's your check or here's not your check. Based on children, here's what you get, here's what you don't. It went right to them. From a small business perspective, they're not, we're not paying a lot of these folks a lot of money. They're not paying these folks a lot of money necessarily. They're going to spend that money in their business, on their employees, in the community. It goes into the business. And I think in some regards, the money that came from the federal stimulus, including the PPP and the economic uh, disaster loan funds, really floated our economy for the last seven to eight months. That's why our revenues are higher than estimated back in May. Those programs actually work. We should have done the same thing from a small business perspective. With regards to the two week and talking to some small businesses already, and I have calls and texts into uh, the secretary prior and a division of taxation director, there's discrepancy with regards to it's 4% because that's two weeks of the year. So we want to provide two weeks of money. And basically it's be, it looks like it's being based on net taxable income, not on revenue. Well, you're, Income is after you've paid your expenses. Your expenses are your employees. So the governor said, I'm also going to put $50 million into the program for folks on unemployment to get an additional $200 per week, $400 over the two weeks. Well, if I want to keep somebody off unemployment, the money you need to give to a small business, if I'm a small business owner and I'm not, I work at a major corporation, continue to do that, I'm fortunate in that regard, needs to be based on your revenue from last year, not your income. Some kids don't have income. It's they pay their bills and they move on. It's a, they may pay themselves a little bit, but so, it's the. So, so let me ask. So, so you're telling me that the fifty million dollars, even in the pause, that's so. There's two books. Don't get confused. There's two conversations going on here. There's a fifty million dollar program that exists for rebuild Rhode Island that still has right. twenty million dollars to dole out. Now, look, it all comes from the CARES Act money. So whether one you know light item is twenty million short, my point is. I mean, how in God's name, with the suffering that small businesses had in 2020 so far, could you not get $50 million out to the business community in the form of grants? That three out of four businesses in your district on your walk were unwitting to the program tells you how or, or, or couldn't, couldn't survive the application process to ask for grant money shows you how ineffective that program has been. 
New Hampshire dumps $400 million into its economy from that same lump of CARES Act money like that early on to sustain their economy. We can't even walk and chew gum at the same time. Now the governor says, here's $50 million for my designed pause, and you're telling me that the calculation for actually distribution of the money is faulty. That's what you're telling me. So far from what I've heard from talking to a business owner and who's interacted with the state, the question still is outstanding. Based on him filling out the form, it said net taxable income. Well, 4% is minuscule on, on, on taxable income. It's revenue. Because if you take the, the oh, also from a mathematical perspective, the transit of closure, A implies B, B implies C, A implies C. If we want to, the governor indicated, let's keep people off of unemployment. Well, you keep off people off of unemployment by giving money to the businesses. The money to businesses need to be cover the expenses for the employees. If it's on taxable income, that's after the employees. It needs to be based on revenue. So that question is still out. I think it could be the case of between commerce and taxation. They didn't necessarily, not necessarily communicated or whatever the case is, but it's an unanswered question as of this morning. I sent the note yesterday. It was late yesterday. All due, all due, all due respect, it was late yesterday. But going back to the, you're exactly right. There's too many $50 million. There's $50 million for Restore RI, which was should have been gone in seconds. There should have been a, right. there should have been 30, 13 minutes later, like they're selling the latest uh, right. iPad just came out. Sorry, iPads are all gone. Right. We, we sold out in 13 minutes. Or tickets to the, uh, we're going to date our age because I think you and I are exactly the same age, man. Uh, I think you're a 79 grad. I think. Yes. Uh, we're going to go to a Springsteen concert in 1983. Oh, it sold out tw 20 minutes. Sorry, you're done. Right. Uh, yeah. We still have $20 million sitting there. Yeah. Well, it, it, well, it's horrifying to learn uh, for the first time. I, you, know, I, you know, give me the holiday weekend as an excuse. I, the, working on the diligence of this $50 million uh, new uh, pause dole out, if it again is wrapped up in restrictions or, or formulas that, that make it minuscule, it's once again another headline for aid, but it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't map out. When we come back, we'll talk about that. The reality, the difference between the governor's press conference and headlines about response and the actual manifestation of it with Senator Lou De Palma. Uh, one more conversation when we come back. Stay with us. Lou De Palma with us. So, Lou, uh, you, you worked today. We, we recorded this uh, broadcast uh, early this morning. You'll be working on it today and tomorrow. And we're going to continue to talk to small businesses over, over the, the course uh, of the week to see how this, this aid, this pause money is going to work. Uh, you've, got, you've got serious concerns, again, about that difference between governor saying she's coming to the aid and then the actual reality of that aid. I hope and I hope that we are not in the same situation where yet another there's a put of dough parked on a line item, and, but people can't get to it. It's like you can't get there from here. You can't you can't get access or the formula doesn't work. And this time around, it's kind of a dangerous game because if you're allocating that money in early December and it's not accessible. Well, that CARES Act money expires at the end of this month. It does. Right? right? Are, are you concerned that we're not going to be able to utilize all the money the feds gave us? Absolutely. And that's part of the uh, issue, Dan, right? You're exactly right. December 30th, the CARES Act money expires. That's also one I, I believe, hope is not a plan. I understand that. But uh, there was a belief that Congress would do one of two things, either modify the language, the restrictions in the CARES Act funding say you could do other things with this, like the budget or whatever, put that aside for a second, whether we should or shouldn't put that aside. Or secondarily, Congress would come back and pass their fourth stimulus, whether it was the Health Act or the HEROES or the different ones that have been put forward, that hasn't happened either. So now we're really between the, the analogy and phrase of between a rock and a hard place. December 30th is coming quickly. It's coming extremely quickly. I've gone through the recent guidance from Treasury. Uh, this time it's up to 15 pages. I think they've come out with three. I think it was one in April, one was May. Now October 15th is the date from Treasury that came out with the guidelines. And the support the for small businesses is categorically right there. They've relaxed some restrictions, answered some questions, but still not to the degree of 
what people have thought they might be able to have happen. But not that we want to spend money for the sake of just spending money, understand and all that. But there are certain needs in our state for the developmental disabilities, for the workers there, for PPE that took a long time. Those that have been working behind the scenes on, others have as well. Testing for those in vulnerable communities. But going back to the piece with regards to the, uh, the governor's press conference and what the application says, I potentially think it's a miscommunication between the agencies, and it happens. When you're running, you're trying to get something done, running a, a thousand miles an hour or whatever, however fast you want to run, you miss those details. Well, the way you don't miss those details, let me bring in three small businesses, go fill out the application and tell me what you think. If yeah. they did that and we didn't find that, what's well, another story? Yeah. All right. Well, you know, over the course of the week, there's going to have to be some real, real focus on that. We didn't get to things like the budget. Of course, you know, you say budget and people go to sleep. This time around, it's not so, uh, it's not such a sleepy issue. It's a very big concern. Right. Um, the deficit is not as high as was fantasized early on, uh, and that's a good thing. I only have a minute here. Um, what is the moral to this? We'll get to budgets in, in, in a later show uh, if, if you come back. I, the other concern really is, is during this pause, there are businesses that just can't open. Uh, and, you know, our neighbors can, gyms, for instance. Uh, I hope we get through this two weeks um, and, and with some level of survivability. Your thought, I have 30 seconds on this. Uh, Dan, I concur with you. Our neighbors, friends, uh, will be a, a lot of work today. They're not certain they're going to go back in two weeks. Given we had just had Thanksgiving, given that family members, given that students came home from school, hopefully tested, other things that are happening, I don't see the surge going down. I'm an engineer. I'm a facts and data guy. Everything I do in building major weapon systems has to be based on facts and data. I pray, we do pray every day that this thing turns the corner. The facts and data will tell us that. Deep in my heart, I don't believe that's going to be the case. I really don't, given yeah. the, what we've seen. All right, well, one, one step at a time. Uh, Senator, thank you for your time, and we'll continue to follow you on both platforms, on the TV and the radio, on the Small Business Advocacy. Senator Lou De Palma, final word, and we come back. Stay with us. Very concerned about the actual execution of a grant program for a small business. Surprise. And we shall follow up with it over the course of the week. Promise. See you on the radio as well on WPRO, weekdays 3 till 6. Have a great night.